Welcome back to Anglers Avenue Salmon School. We're on class number two. We're going to talk about spring coho salmon fishing. Every year, about March, April time frame, down on the southern basin of Lake Michigan, uh, the coho fishing really gets going and gets heated, heated up. Uh, ports like Waukegan, Winthrop Harbor, Chicago, Illinois, St. Joe, Michigan, Michigan City, Indiana, see some of the most premier coho salmon fishing Lake Michigan has to offer. So if you're interested in catching probably the most delicious fish on Lake Michigan um, and want to put some numbers in the boat, this class is going to really help you. Uh, the nice part about coho salmon fishing the last couple of years is that we've been able to enjoy it all the way up here to Sheboygan and even north of here up to Two Rivers and Kiwani. Uh, we've been pretty blessed the last couple of years with a really nice migration of coho salmon uh, northward and this class may help a lot of you guys that haven't really fished coho salmon too much in the past but last couple of years have seen some uh, population of coho salmon show up around your port. So we'll start by talking as I said time of year and the southern basin of Lake Michigan I would say south of Kenosha on our side and probably St. Joe and south on the Michigan side. Uh, it, it starts up and gets going about when you put your boat in, you know, that March-April time frame. And usually it, it starts out in the real shallow water, um, as, as shallow as four or five foot of water, out to 30, 40 foot of water. Uh, harbor mouth areas can be good, otherwise usually a lot like the brown trout fishing, any area where you can find some colored water and some little bit warmer water uh, usually is productive. Then as we progress a little bit, we get more into the May time frame, which is what I want to really focus on. That's when the coho salmon have now started to spread out amongst uh, Lake Michigan a little bit further north. Um, they also start to migrate their way out towards the middle of the lake more um, on the southern end, and it becomes more of an offshore fishery. So whether you're fishing Sheboygan, our home port, or you're fishing down in Waukegan, Illinois, or over in St. Joe, Michigan, in the month of May and June, uh, you're going to see more of an offshore fishery. And what I mean by that is 120 foot all the way out to maybe 250 foot of water on an average day might be the area you're going to target these fish in. But a lot like steelhead or rainbow trout, uh, coho salmon, generally speaking, are up near the top of the water column. Uh, top 50 feet, top 40 feet is where we tend to find the most volume. You definitely can catch coho salmon early in the year down 60, 80, 100 feet. Uh, I'm not saying you can't, but we generally target them in the top 30 foot for me, um, mostly. We'll start with the equipment. Uh, it's it's semi-similar to the uh, brown trout fishing in that you don't need a lot of equipment, again, because we're fishing that top 30 feet or so of the water column. Uh, we, we go back to um, planer board setups that are probably the most popular. Um, we like to run a lot of planer boards, uh, four, six, some of the charters might even run eight or ten um, planer board setups on any given day. Um, lead core is very popular. The guys all around Lake Michigan really like lead core um, on their planer boards. One colors, two colors, three colors, five colors, ten colors. Um, any of that stuff can be good depending on where in the water column the cohos are. Um, leaning a little more heavy towards the one, two, and three colors seem to be real good for a lot of guys. Um, one thing we do here uh, that I don't think they do in a lot of ports is we really utilize that keel sinker again, that inline sinker. Same sort of setup as we use for brown trout, except now we don't use quite as uh, light of tackle. Uh, now we may, we may can or don't have to stick with the braid uh, main line, but even if you do, you don't have to worry so much about that you know, real thin fluorocarbon. You can go to 20 pound test now on a lot of your stuff. Um, cohos don't seem to be very picky. If you find them, uh, they seem to generally be active and interested in feeding. So you don't have to get too crazy on light line um, trying to tuck them into biting. Usually if you can find them, you'll catch them. Uh, so with the planer boards, as I said, um, most guys on our side of the lake at least, and I think also on the Michigan side at this point, have reverted to inline planer boards, a lot like this OR12 offshore planer board. It gives you the ability to fish different levels of the water column. As I mentioned before, whether you're going to use a keel sinker or you're going to use lead core, um, you can fish, you know, maybe 25 or a 
sorry, maybe 10 feet all the way on down to 30 feet on one side of the boat with three or four planer boards out. Where if you have a big board, um, you, you would have to reel in other lines to reset your lines properly. So we really like the inline planer boards to be able to get our rods to the side away from the boat. As far as our other rod options, downriggers usually aren't a big part of the coho game, which is why I mentioned that uh, you don't need a lot of equipment or special equipment. This is another type of fishing you can do and be very successful at with a smaller boat and not necessarily set up for salmon fishing. Um, because we're fishing the top 30 foot of the water column for the most part, uh, we generally don't use downriggers too much. You can, but they're not our most productive rods. Planer boards are. And then secondly, <clears throat> we really go to this slide diver again, but now we're going to go to the size 1, which is the what I would call a standard slide diver. Very similar to a dipsy diver size. Not the mini slide diver like we like for brown trout fishing, but now we're going to go to a size 1 slide diver. And the main reason is, is, is once the coho fishing gets good all along the shoreline in that May-June time frame on Lake Michigan, uh, they have already moved out to the deeper water and down deeper in the column. So they're not necessarily in 5 or 10 foot of water anymore and not down 2, 3, 4 feet in the column. They're now down 10, 15, 20 feet, uh, maybe even deeper and having that regular size slide diver will allow you to get down there. But you still, because you're fishing that top 30 foot of the water column, want to utilize the advantage of the slide diver, which is that you can put a long lead out behind the diver, maybe 30, 50, as far as maybe 100 feet behind the diver, but still be able to get it to pull to the side. So uh, that's why the slide diver, I think, is a much more useful tool than a standard dipsy uh, for coal fishing. We'll get into um, a little bit of the tackle here and talk about the different things we use. This is a very unique style of fishing. A lot of the stuff I'm going to show you, we, not a lot, some of the stuff I'm going to show you, we don't use for anything else. Um, and there was a couple questions on the brown trout videos, do you use orange dodgers and things like that for browns? No. Um, we're going to start talking about dodgers right now. and. Um, we, we generally only use these for coho salmon. By far the most popular, the number one seller is the uh, Lure Jensen Double O Dodger. The size is Double O and this color is Fire. Um, that's the number one color for coho fishing. You can see I believe this is about a six inch Dodger in size. It's the number one seller and uh, probably the overall most productive, somewhat because it's the most used, uh, on Lake Michigan for coho salmon. If you would go down to Winthrop Harbor, Waukegan, Illinois, Michigan City, Indiana in April, May time frame, you likely would see on any given charter boat anywhere between 10 and 20 of these hanging from their rods. Um, you know, I have 10 or 20 rods rigged up with a dodger and fly on it and this exact dodger on just about every rod. Um, obviously that's not a super exciting or uh, uh, for me a fun way of fishing when all your lures are virtually the same. So of course, as I usually do, we tinker around with different stuff. And one of the hottest things we had to get going the last couple years um, was the uh, mini spin doctor. And I had one of these uh, given to me by a guy we call Hoodwink, who works here in Anglers Avenue, about four or five years ago, maybe a little longer. And he said when he had fished Port Washington, he had done really well on these. And it sat in my boat, sat in my boat, and I never really used it because we just hadn't had good coho fishing for a while. So um, we got this set up uh, a couple years ago when the coho fishing was good. And the nice advantage to this, I'm going to take this out of the package. The nice advantage to uh, this bait is it seems to really work well on divers. Um, it also seems to work really well on lead core. This is a, it has a unique action obviously in comparison to the Dodger. The Dodger gives you that swaying back and forth motion like this, and then every third or fourth sway it'll completely roll over. And then sway back and forth some more, and then every third or fourth sway it'll roll over. Where this is a rotating flasher, so it roll, you know, rotates in a complete 360 every time through the water. And as you can imagine, based on the day, um, and what type of rod you put this on, you know, some days the Spin Doctor is going to be better, some days the Double O Fire Dodger is going to be better. Um, we found that on lead core, 
and divers. We prefer the, the spin doctor on the keel sinker setups and on um, downriggers if we're going to use them. We prefer the double O metal Dodger. As far as colors go, you, you saw a lot of orange. This is an, an orange with flat orange tape. Uh, if you go on our website and check out the six inch baby spin doctors, not mini, I call them mini, I apologize, they're called baby spin doctors. If you go on our website, check out the six inch baby spin doctors, you're going to see that they have a lot of orange and red colors. They do make some of the same colors they do in the eight inch, the white and greens and stuff. We've not had a lot of luck with those. Primarily, it's been either an orange or a red blade, but then we've utilized different color tapes, like that one's a flat orange tape. Uh, there's some with gold tape that are pretty good. And then two years ago, we came out with one that was my daughter Lily's favorite, which uh, was this orange blade with the UV tape on both sides. And for me personally, and I know a lot of our customers, this has been the hottest one the last couple years. This is an Angler's Avenue exclusive. Uh, as far as I know, nobody else has this one. Um, and it's been ungodly productive for us the last couple of seasons uh, on the cola salmon, just doing crazy good damage uh, for that. So probably one you'd want to get along with a few of these orange flat, orange crush type uh, baby spin doctors. My guess is that a lot of you guys, if you haven't listened to my videos or different things in the past, um, probably haven't used the baby spin doctors a lot. You're going to want to get them in your program. They should probably be 20% or 30% of your rods um, are those baits. Uh, a quick story to kind of give you an example of that a couple years ago I went down fishing in, in April uh, in Port Washington on my walleye boat with my brother-in-law and we ran six rods. We ran five of them with the double uh, uh, O Dodger, which is the primarily primary bait um, on planer boards and he ran one of these on his Dipsy and I had that one spin doctor I was telling you about along and I rigged it up and put it on my Dipsy. Well we caught our, our two man limit 10 cohos and we got seven of them on that one rod on the dipsy and three on the other five rods. So that gives you a ex uh, little example and a reason why you don't want to just stick to the old faithful dodger because every day this might not be the best option. The other thing is once um, March and April come along, or I mean uh, April and May comes along, the fish, they'll start to be willing to eat a little bit more of the salmon tackle. Um, and I'm going to talk about that in a second. I'll show you the different types of flies first that we put on this do these dodgers before I forget about that. So we, we sell two types of coho flies here at Anglers Avenue. Uh, we sell the Rapture brand uh, slider coho fly, we call it. The reason we call it a slider is because you buy them like this and you make a, a leader out of them and with a hook on it and you get a hook with the fly and you just slide the fly onto the line over the top of the hook. So it's called a slider fly. And that's set up like that right there is what you tie either behind the double O Dodger or your baby spin doctor. And it's great, great product. Uh, they hold up extremely well. Um, we have, I think, around 12 or 13 colors of these Rapture Coho flies. And primarily all of them are, are um, very high producing colors. I think this one's like a green chartreuse. This one might be something he calls like a June bug or black mirage, something like that. Um, there is one called shrimp. I didn't grab it, but it's an orange one. Um, that's been really, really hot the last couple of years. Um, so if you're going to pick up some of these, that would be a good one. Uh, vice versa, the other brand we sell um, and, and sells just as well is our salmon candy flies. And these coho flies are tied a little bit differently. They're tied on a hook already. So you see the treble hook there. And you see the fly's got the uh, hook tip uh, that you can tie your leader line to. So if, if you were going to set up a leader on this one, all you do would just be take a piece of line without this hook and tie it to the end of this uh, fly like this. And I'll do that quick. And you'd trim that off. And now you'd be able to, if I'm hiding this hook here, because we wouldn't have that on there, now you'd have a leader set up um, that you could then attach to the back of the baby spin doctor or the back of a double O Dodger. I'm sure you're asking yourself, what lead length? Um, for us, I primarily use two and a half times the length of the Dodger. So these are six inch Dodgers. So you're talking about 15 inches. Um, I hear a lot of guys say anywhere between 12 inches and 18 inches. Um, you can play around with that if you'd like. 
but for me personally, two and a half times the length of the Dodger works very well for me, and I stick to that. So I just, uh, what I would just do is I would take this, this fly here, and I'd measure it on the bottom of this spin doctor, and that would be one time the length, and I'd hold that with my finger, get it on the bottom again, that'd be two times the length, and I'd do that one more time till I got to the halfway point, and then at that point I would turn it over like that, create a loop, and there I would have my two times the length of the Dodger, or, or in this case, Baby Spin Doctor. So I would have my lead set up there. Um, fly colors, as far as coho fishing goes, um, matters tremendously. Uh, for whatever reason, uh, the coho, they, they feed, they will bite a lot of different stuff, but if you wanna put the most fish in the boat and you wanna do it in a quick manner, um, or on a tougher day, be able to catch your limit of fish, really pay attention to the fly color. That seems to be a lot more important than the Dodger or Spin Doctor color. Um, as long as your Dodger and Spin Doctors are an orange shade, different piece of tape makes a little bit of difference, um, but a different color, like these two are much different, is gonna make a huge difference day in and day out. Um, this one on, on your right, I believe it's gonna be on the screen, um, is my favorite color, we call that Mardi Gras. It's purple, green, and gold. Uh, over the course of time, that's been my best color. This uh, Chartreuse and Mirage is a new one. It's not one I've fished much, and uh, might end up being an incredibly good color. It might be a wolf. Um, but the reality of it is, is that you gotta try these different colors um, and see what works. The one I tied up is a lot of guys' favorite, which is called Flat Blue Green Gold. And what it is, it's, it's a blue-green material mixed with some gold in it. And that is definitely a, a very good one. And there's a bunch of others. Um, green and gold is probably our number one overall seller. Blue-green gold uh, is a very good seller. Um, lots of oranges. We got an orange and gold, an orange and mirage. Those are all good sellers. Aqua, you know, depending on the individual you talk to, they're gonna, they're gonna probably like a little bit different color. So as I said, when we get into May and June, which is when the coals start to spread out, go a little deeper, and they spread out along the whole shoreline of Lake Michigan here. Um, the other nice part is you can start to fish them with some different type of tackle, uh, not just primarily dodger to flies. Some days, spoons work better. And some of the spoons we like to use for them are a great investment because they're also good for brown trout and steelhead. They're great multi-species spoons. Um, and a prime example of these would be these standard size Michigan Stingers here in Confused UV, this is on a gold blank, and in UV Inmate, which is on a gold blank. This UV Inmate, again, is one of Anglers Avenue's original exclusive colors. They now sell it as a stock item, but it's one of the hundreds of colors we've developed over the years that's turned out to be one of the best patterns around. Um, and these two, both will catch you cohos, both will catch you browns, and both will catch you steelhead. So they're the Michigan Stinger spoons with the UV tape in them and some mixes of oranges and yellows and pinks um, are great spoons to have in your tackle box and, and make sure you get them out there when you're fishing for coho. Again, just like brown trout fishing, we mix in some of the Dreamweaver Super Slim spoons. This particular one is a deadly one for uh, steelhead and for coho. It's called Magic Man. It's a gold blank spoon. It's got a little bit of orange tape on the back and on the front it's got a a little bit of oil slick and a little bit of orange. But there's a good mix of colors in the uh, Super Slims. We have a bunch of custom colors that we're just working on getting on the website now that we had all last year that we unfortunately couldn't get up on the site because we had a great busy year thanks to all our customers. Um, we're working on getting those up and there's a lot of them that you guys haven't seen before. So we'll, we'll get those up there. And a lot of those are based on brown trout or coho patterns. The other spoon that I've done very well with, uh, both for coho and for steelhead the last few years that I don't think gets fished as much as it should, is the RV Moonshine spoons. Those, the RV are the ones with the tape on them. Um, I prefer the RV version over the regular version, especially for cohos and steelhead, because uh, I think they want that shine that you don't get with a standard Moonshine spoon. On your right, you got the Agent Orange, which is probably my favorite and uh, my number one. And then on the right, I mean on your uh, left, in my right hand here, you have the RV Craig's Flounder, which started as an angler's custom and now is a stock item. Um, this is one of the deadliest spoons 
south of Kenosha on the Wisconsin Illinois side of Lake Michigan. Uh, I know lots of charter captains that come up here and buy a pile of these because this thing just you know massacres coho salmon and will definitely be a great uh, steelhead spoon for you as well. Um, so those are some spoons to keep in mind. There's some other orange type colors that uh, um, Moonshine offers that would be great for you to look into. Don't forget about crankbaits. It's, uh, especially earlier in the season if you get down south by by that Waukegan, Winthrop, uh, Kenosha, Racine area in that March-April time frame and you're going to fish that shallow water coho salmon. Uh, we do really well on the shallow diving bay rats. Again, just like we did before with the brown trout. Whether it's the S3 model or the short shallow model, model you can see again here, orange tiger um, is a great color. There's some other patterns that work as well, but we stick to the oranges, the pinks, the greens, um, stuff like that that's going to be good for coal. This is probably the number one because it seems like they're really attracted to orange. Um, you would run these behind a planer board just with no weight, no lead core necessarily, just, just as a flat line. This will dive three feet and the, the short shallow will dive five feet on its own. Um, then the other bait that works really, really well that a lot of guys like as well is this Brad's Thin Fish. You can hear the rattles in it. It's a very loud bait. Um, it's not one that I've used primarily. I don't think it's a real good bait for May, June time frame when Sheboygan gets cohos. I think it's really good in March and April, early season coho action in shallow water. This is a bait that they seem like they can't resist. I know in St. Joe, Michigan, they do really well on this. Michigan City, Indiana, and down in Chicago. This is a uh, very preferred bait for coho salmon. If you guys have any questions, um, make sure you ask them on our Facebook page. We'll do our best to answer them all or on our YouTube page where we have this video. Uh, if you don't know, uh, my name is Russell um, from Anglers Avenue, and our website is www.anglersavenueproshop.com. You can get any of this gear there. Our telephone number is 920-395-2079. So if you have any questions that you wanna call about or some specific stuff you wanna order that you don't see on the site or you wanna make sure you get the right stuff, feel free to call them and ask for me um, and we're going to work on class number three next week Tuesday so I hope you're enjoying these classes good luck fishing when you get a chance